The other day, I filled up this hard drive, the Lossier D2. Now, someone who has previously worked with this, the Lossier 2 Big Raid Pair Drive, I thought that removing the hard drive from one of these was pretty straightforward, being that removing it from here is that easy. Since I got this one here first, I sort of thought that this one would be exactly the same considering the design looks identical, but in the form factor of a single hard drive. When I went to actually try to open it, honestly, my first thing was I tried to pull it out and I was like, what's happening? This is so strange. I did a little bit of research. I wasn't able to find pretty much anything online for this particular model. That being said, I was able to find some information for the previous generation and for the next generation, but not for this one, which is the one that I own. So I'm gonna put out a video saying, yes, you can replace the hard drive, but you need some tools to do it, and it's just a little bit awkward. So in order to remove the hard drive, you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver and to remove the screws. And then you're left with this sort of awkward wiring situation. It really doesn't inspire much confidence. It just really looks extremely fragile, which is probably why Lossier decided to make a newer version of this and this one wasn't around for very long. Anyways, once you've removed these screws, you actually can pull it out. Just mind the wires because as I mentioned, they are extremely fragile and you just sort of yank it out awkwardly. Like I said, doesn't inspire much confidence. We're in the clear. That is the casing without the hard drive. From here on out, it's a pretty similar situation to replacing the hard drives in one of these. In fact, if I show them side by side, you'll see that it's a very similar thing. I just don't understand why Lassier didn't make these the same. One is logical and the other one makes no sense whatsoever, this little dangling wire. Look at that dangling wire. It's just, anyways. So now it's time to replace this guy who is full with a brand new Iron Wolf NAS 8 terabytes that I purchased the other day. Hopefully we were able to hear all of that with the crinkling plastic the entire way through. So let's get this baby in here. Just wanted to point out this little sticker that says warranty void if broken. So I guess they really don't want you to be exchanging the hard drives. That being said, this is sort of useless to me right now as it is because I want to keep all of my projects backed up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just void that warranty, break that warranty. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that warranty so that this can actually continue being of use to me. Very fragile piece of paper. I was trying to be careful, but it's very clearly broken. Okay, I'm just cutting it. Now I'm removing that black sticker that holds the back cable in place. Just gonna leave that on the side. I'm definitely gonna wanna put that back in. And let's see how the rest of this goes. Hopefully it doesn't end in complete disaster. All right, and now I remove this. And there's my hard drive. This is what I'm left with. It's sort of like the casing, the cable, and this attachment. I've left this little black connector. It looked like it was part of the hard drive. Just be careful when you're removing it because this doesn't inspire much confidence either. All right, now to put the new hard drive in. It's definitely not the easiest thing to put together. As you can see, you sort of just have to hold the drive in place because it doesn't really latch onto anything until you start putting the screws in. All right, the most difficult screws are in. Now just gonna put the side screws to hold the drive in place and finally put it all back in the casing. Okay, and now we put it back in its casing and we try it out. Gotta be very careful with those cables.
Okay, seems fairly secure. Nice. And now for our original triad of screws. I found this originally hard to put in. You just sort of have to put it at an angle like this where the, that's how it's facing. That's how I was able to do it before is sort of like that. And then you put in the rest, but there's a little bit of play here. There you go, something like that. All right, so I'm fairly certain I screwed in something wrong onto the hard drive because the ports aren't lining up with the holes on the back side. I'll have to take a look at that and I'll let you know exactly what it was that I did wrong. So as you can see here, I can align this part of the hard drive, but as soon as I try to align this screw over here, my connectors will fall out of place. So that's something to consider before you try to put the casing back on. So that's what I'm gonna fix right now. So what I had done wrong is I had put this outer part on top of this, and that's where the screw bit was going in through first. First through the hole connected to this, and secondly to the hole connected to, to this. So that was a mistake, as you can see, trying to zoom in here. The screw is first going through the hole connected to the connector, and secondly, going through the hole connected to the outer bit. In fact, if I were to turn this around, the outer bit would be behind this connector. And that is true for both screws that you have to screw into the hard drive. The outer bit is on this side of the hard drive. All right, now maybe screw this in and test that it works. But first I gotta put this back into the chassis. Oh, that sound. Oh yeah. Just as easy as the too big. <sighs> All right, now for the moment of truth. Well, that's a good sign. The disc you inserted was not readable by this computer. This might make sense because it's a new drive, so let's maybe initialize it. I've got no other drives connected to this computer, and it seems to recognize the Lossier D2 Thunderbolt 3 media. So that's cool. Uh, erase. Let's go Mac OS journaled, extended journaled, formatting. It's taking its sweet time. And we're done. That's how you swap out a hard drive on the Lossier D2. Super simple. Not gonna lie, if I had known that this was not as straightforward as the Lossier too big, I 100% would not have purchased this. For the future, in fact, I don't really know if I'm ever gonna remove this drive from here because of how much work it is. I might just get a SATA connector, put the drive right next to my desk. I mean, this is just so over the top unnecessary. But it's the gear I had and I didn't want to spend, what, 45 bucks? No need. Anyways, I hope that was able to help some of you out. If it did, please like this video, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the cool things. And, you know, maybe you'll have an easier time than I did. Have a good one. Bye. I put the right drive back in there, right? Yeah. Certainly hope so. <laughs> this is a this is a Phillips screwdriver, right? Fifth time this try. Fifth. <laughs> Fifth time. <sighs> oh. hey. DIY overhead rig. Why is one called Philip? Fifth. Times. Fifth times. Fifth times. Fifth times. Yeah. The charm. Wasn't invented by Mr. Flat. Fifth time is the charm. Fifth times. Fifth times the charm.